Hello, my name is Ben. And my name is Kenny. And we are the hosts of the Too Big podcast this week. And our word is going to be inclusion um, in honor of Pride Month. So when I say the word inclusion, what is the thing that you think of most, Kenny? Mm, it's going to be weird. Uh when I think of like words and numbers, I see colors usually. Okay. The word inclusion is white in my head, which okay. I like, which is going to sound stupid. It's a combination of all of the colors. <laughs> it's white. Right. Um, but that makes perfect sense. It does make perfect sense, you know? um, which is a cliche, which I like about it. Right. But right. when I, I tell you the truth, it's the word I see white. Um I've always felt on the outside of inclusion, mm -hmm. and just now I'm trying to make myself feel included. So it's a word that I'm trying to get to understand more. Right, right. Um, that was that's kind of that that kind of makes sense with the uh, the colors. I never thought about it that way. Oh, it's all of your all of your colors, um, or the absence of color. Right. I mean, yeah. That's when I think of inclusion. I think of food. Do I think you? Of, yeah, I think of ice cream. You ever go to a place and they go, "Oh, what inclusions do you want?" You know, and then you, you then they yeah. do the thing. With the You're ice bringing cream. me back to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I totally get it. I totally get it. I make people throw random things into a recipe, and that's my job all day to make that inclusions. Right, what right. would you like to include in this? Let's include more, more, more. Right. Um, yeah, I like that as the yeah. definition of the word inclusion. Yeah, it, because it makes a big combination of different things that are that it's a diverse not not something you would always put together but we're here now all, right it's all together now all together this is cold right. stone this is your right. sunday <laughs> right <laughs> let's let's just say cold stone doesn't uh support the show but you know no i wish i support cold stone though yeah definitely <laughs> There's also chili. People use inclusions in chili. I don't know if you're a chili person. I but. don't do chili. I don't eat meat. Okay. Yeah. Are you vegan or? No, just vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Interested in veganism. Mm -hmm. Not quite there yet. Right. <laughs> yeah, my brother, he's uh, one of those people, vegetarian with fish. So that's a... Uh, I used to be a pescatarian, yeah. A pescatarian. Uh, in high school, I tried it out. Um, yeah. I don't know. And then I just was turned off on meat one day. And yeah. so now just strictly veggies. Yeah. <laughs> Don't don't uh, don't fault me. I, I like I like meat. No, I don't blame I'm you. I used fan. to clean the bones when I was a kid. It was weird. <laughs> I loved steak, and I could I could clean a bone. I yeah, would. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it anymore though. Yeah, this and that's the thing too. It's uh, steak. It's like I could go with. I have to be in a mood for steak, but when I'm in a mood for steak, man, ugh, it hits I am the spot. So in a mood for steak. Yeah. When we talk about gender identity and inclusion, well, some of the things that you think about when you think of gender identity, if you're comfortable expressing what your gender identity is, how do you identify? Absolutely. Um, I came out as gay in high school when I was first figuring out that I could mm -hmm. um, identify as something, anything. Right. Uh, now I still identify as gay. However, I don't identify um, with any specific gender. Mm -hmm. uh, I came out as non-binary. I like that word, but I would also use gender non-conforming. I think it's another way of explaining Okay. Is that. there is there a difference in that or is it... Yes you know? and no. Yes and no. Okay. Um, I think they both mean that I don't define myself by any specific gender. Uh -huh. It's just different terms for the same thing. Right. And I right. also use they, them again because I don't identify with either right end of the binary spectrum do, do you find that some people well i mean when you tell people that i mean it's it's got to be tough dealing with that in day-to-day -day life when you identify one way and people want to identify uh, me another way correct let me tell you it's been 20 years of it yeah and um i mean i get misgendered every single day mm -hmm. i've just it's something that I've dealt with. It's something that happens every single day. It's normal. It's an odd day if I don't get misgendered. Mm -hmm. So it's something I deal with, um, I think, with a grain of salt. Right. Always. Is it? Is it an understanding thing? I'm sure that, you know. Yeah. I mean, I still get misgendered by family members, which hurts every once in a while. I'll be honest. I get misgendered by coworkers, by customers. Right. Um, but it's also like, I know who I am. 
Mm -hmm. I'm still figuring it out. I think that the most important people in my life know who I am. So who cares if a stranger calls me miss every once in a while? Right. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty, I would say that's a pretty positive way to think about it. I mean, there's no other way for me to think about it or else I'm going to dig myself right. a hole, you or know? Be, do you want to be angry your entire life? I, I mean, don't. I've spent all of my childhood being angry. <laughs> I want to enjoy my 20s, please. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I totally get that. Yeah. Um, so there, there's also, when you talk about, here's a, here's a thing too, a thing that I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, confused by this. Is when I think of you know cis and trans, mm -hmm. the first thing that pops into my head when I think cis and trans is organic chemistry, <laughs> and it's because I learned about isomers and their cis and trans configurations and isomers, which comes from, um, I believe, the Latin uh, root, which is this side or the other side is basically cis and trans. I like that, um, and so. Those terms being used in popular culture, that's something that happened over the last, I mean, I, I would say since the 90s is when I heard that there was a paper written that started using cis. Trans has been used um, derogatorily before. But Way it's kind back of, when. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it was kind of it, it kind of like, well, we're we're going to take it back. Right. It's almost like this introduction of the opposite. Like, we've never heard of it before. Right. It was... You know, we're always mentioning gay, but what's the opposite of that? Hetero, that's the normal. Right. What's the normal opposite of trans? Right. Which shouldn't be the normal, but unfortunately in today's society it is. Right. So I, I like that, this or the other, one right. side or the other. Right. Um, And that's kind of where I fall, too. I almost refuse to pick one. I like both. I right. like neither sometimes, so I almost envision myself as the gray in between the black and the white. Is it is there a thing okay when when you talk about some people talk about gender fluidity. Mhm. Mm right? What is that is that just going back and forth between two and just kind of like you you self-identify as neither but you've got you know there's there's a range there. Absolutely. There's, so you can feel feminine in some cases and that's you know as as kind of a self-described I guess I would call myself um, if you could do it out of like a percentage of a hundred, mm -hmm. that's an easy way of describing it. How femininity balanced with masculinity, how would you describe yourself? How do you, within how you feel, you know, walking out in the world, how right. you feel within yourself, you I know, would, I think I everyone say, has a little bit of femininity and masculinity. Right. It's whether or not you embrace it or, you know, see, some people don't want one or the other, and that's completely fine. Right. Whatever they're comfortable with expressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, and that's that's a lot of what I think is missing in this world is understanding different different perspectives and understanding that people are different, and that's not a bad thing. It's, it's not a bad we thing. All, we all have common things that we, as human beings, can identify with each other on and, you know, respect just respect people. That's what I, mean, I really just... like too. Is I'm, I'm uh, finally allowing myself to find different things that work. Mm -hmm. um, I shaved my head last year, and now <laughs> that my hair is growing back, I'm excited because I get to see all of the different lengths that my curls will grow back in, and find what works and find what makes me feel comfortable. Right. Because you know, up until I shaved my head, I had long curls that made me feel very feminine right. and i wanted to get away from that because it no longer made me feel comfortable right and that's the thing with gender too gender is not the same as sex all it really is is how how there's a cat in here yep that's that's bash i love the cats he's going he's going nuts i don't know he doesn't usually do this he's usually just kind of like he's chilling that's all right he's making his presence known he's, he's the pod cat he's one, pod of, the, cat. one of the one of the two pod cats pod cats right here. Um, gender, all it is, is how you wish to express yourself mm -hmm. out in the open. That's right. really all it is. If you wish to express yourself as a woman, usually you would do things that are associated with femininity. That's all it is. Yeah. And so usually I like to say neither or almost I'm both Right. in a way as such it like cancels out. Right. Like it's hard to pick which one i am because i'm a combination of both so much to the point where you can't tell anymore that's where i feel most comfortable 
Yeah, and I think a lot of people they they, they travel the spectrum of of you know that, but it, associated with with gender, I think is also there's stereotypes, right? For sure. And, and the stereotypes of like what a male is and what a female mm-hmm. is that's that's kind of. It's very outdated. It's, it's very outdated. But it still stands because where are you going to... You need a starting point. Right. Attraction. We were talking about this earlier, too, mm-hmm. which I thought was very interesting, where you asked, as 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 gender neutral, yeah. um, do I, you know... Can, can I still I, identify... Can I still identify as a lesbian? Even though I don't, I don't identify as a woman. Right. That's a great question. Yeah. That's... Um, I mean, I... You're could. still trying to figure it out, too, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think just... it's mostly, like, just preference. I could identify as a lesbian, I just choose not to, because uh-huh. it does associate woman, right? I guess, to me, uh, I think to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, I just would prefer a, a gender-neutral person who mm-hmm. is attracted to women. I use the word gay. I right. think gay is also a very open term. Right. Just because it's... You say gay, you know I'm not straight. Right. And that's almost all I need sometimes. Yeah. And that's that's also something that's changed from from my time, not to divulge my age. <laughs> but but I mean that's that's a thing too. It's I an remember, important thing to to acknowledge. Yeah, I that's it used to be used derogatorily and I don't want to say it was done to be hurtful. Yeah, it wasn't a hurtful thing. It's like, you know, you would say, "Oh, that's gay." Or that's, you know... It was to express something of disdain. Like, you don't like something. Right, right. It's because it was it taboo. It wasn't, it wasn't normal. Yeah, it wasn't right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, looking back on it, it's like some people uh, look at, like, your older um, television shows and get triggered by that sort of thing. And it's like, just take yourself back to that time and understand that... Times there were was, different. There, was, there, there wasn't an understanding. There wasn't, there wasn't the willingness to understand that at that time because exactly. it wasn't really. Um, no one knew social, it existed. Yeah. Or, or people who knew it existed were still embarrassed. There's, I think there's a lot. There's a much better atmosphere for coming out these yeah. days. There was a lot of fear back then. There yeah. was a lot of consequences for coming out and making it known that you were different. Right um in any way in I any mean, way it's just, right and you know. i mean i as a kid i got called gay on the playground like that was used as an insult mm-hmm. uh of course as i got older i realized i was gay and it's not an insult right. um those kids were just kids right you know right uh but i think that's the thing too you have to be mature about it it can be overwhelming with all of these labels but there's a simple way of defining who everyone is and how they feel comfortable right. without getting into all these labels. I simply don't feel like a man. I don't feel like a woman, plain and simple. You feel like a man. You're comfortable feeling like a man. That's all you need to leave it at, you know? Right. Same that's, could be said for yeah. a woman. I, I'm yeah. a mother. I'm a sister, you know? Right. It's it's also it's it's kind of my my thought on on my sexuality has always been it's none of your damn business. It's it's true, and, yeah. And and who I love is is my business. And exactly. So I mean, you know, I, that's that's kind of, there, and there's love that spans all different kinds of boundaries. We're, when we're talking about this, we're talking about you know sexual attraction right romantic Mostly. attraction romantic yeah there's familial love there's friendship love right. there's right. a whole bunch of ways to and, define it and there's a lot of overlap there yeah, which definitely. is you know but but i mean that's the thing i mean i felt those types of feelings for basically every every type of gender every type of person over my lifetime mm-hmm. to varying degrees i so think everyone just, has so i don't really want to say whether you know i just don't have a particular I, I, label for yeah, that? Yeah, I can't really say. I mean, you know, I guess the closest is pansexual, I guess. I don't I don't really quite understand that's like regardless of any kind of difference. I mean, you can analyze it to a point where it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but it's, it's um, I, that's what I, you know, I just, if I love someone, I love someone. If Attraction I'm attracted to, to someone, all. Yeah, if I'm attracted to someone, that's, you know. And there, there are things we were talking about how gender... Um, there's certain like odd gender things for me where I'm attracted to women that look, I don't say, I don't want to say masculine, but muscular Mm -hmm. and I'm attracted to men who are more feminine. 
looking. Yeah, you and like just kind of like it's sort of contrasting that, traits yeah, on yeah. different genders. Right. That makes total sense. Yeah. I think everyone's attracted to all genders. I just think, you know, whether or not they're in touch with that or whether or not they're willing to accept it. Accept it, explore it. Yeah. People can, you know, they're usually you're introduced to the world as straight. That's how I was introduced to the world. Mm -hmm. And for some people that works and they just stick with it. And for other people, they can acknowledge that there is another part of themselves right. that they're willing to explore. And I think that's where it gets fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, I think if everyone's confident in just saying, you know, I'm a human first and foremost, I like who I like. I want just a human connection. It doesn't matter who it is, See, who it's with. That's that's the thing. That's like the in the utopian society, right? We're just gonna. It doesn't matter in an ideal world, right? It doesn't matter what what color you are, what gender, what mm -hmm. what preference, what anything. You, we're just people. It's and, all bones and underneath. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bones and wiring and whatever. It, honestly, but yeah, it's, it's for me. That's that's like what is it, I. We are far from that. Definitely. And, and and I think there's a lot of fear that plays into to the negative thoughts on, on all this stuff. And I don't know where the fear comes from. What fear it, are you referring to? Like people's fear of... Of being different? Of others being different. Oh, I definitely think it's a misunderstanding. I think it's a lack of knowledge. Yeah. Um. I mean, I have firsthand experience with that. My family just... Some of my family just kind of refuse to learn a new thing. Right. And a lot of people choose to do that because learning new things is scary. Right. I don't blame them. And it's difficult. It is difficult. Right. And I mean, I don't I don't blame people for getting overwhelmed, especially when it seems as though there's a new term coming out every single day. That LGBTQ plus thing. Plus the is, alphabet. I, yeah, I, I don't. I, I I still don't know. I, I the Q. That's that's where I stop. I'm stopping at the Q. You plus. know, that's fair. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a fear of learning something new yeah. because it disrupts the routine. It disrupt. It disrupts what what's you're, normal. What you're comfortable with. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Right. It's it's a matter of stepping out of your comfort zone, whether or not someone's willing to do that. Yeah. And that's not something that we can control, but we can try and represent ourselves in such a way that 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 shows that we are accepting of that. You know, I mean, I you may not understand me or what what um, what I represent or what I think, but if you respect me as a person, I that's all I care about. Right. It's like, you know, I, I want I want. I give I respect people until they make it known to me that that they don't deserve your that, respect. Yeah, exactly. That's like, how I am too. It's, it's not even it's not even deserve. It's like that you can kind of say okay, I can see where they're coming from. You can put their your your self in their shoes, but if they disrespect you in such a way that's very like unforgivable mm -hmm. there's a point at which you can cross the line oh absolutely definitely so. i i have crossed that line um, <laughs> i think we all have at yeah some point i think it's life. i think it's a form of protection yeah but i i, I want to touch on something too i think that people who know that they're different are some of the most accepting people because they know that they're different they know that they've been on the outside and so they coming back to the word inclusion they want to make sure that there's a feeling of inclusivity at all times right I right. think that I try and actively do that because if I'm not upholding an environment of inclusivity, who is? Right. I exactly. need that environment of inclusivity. If I'm the one person wall that's going to do that, so be it. And I'm slowly learning how to stand up for myself and correct people when I'm misgendered. It's it's something that's very difficult still to do, mm -hmm. but it has to be done by someone and that someone has to be me. Right. I'm going on about my day. It's... You know, I have a cat at home who loves me. I have my <laughs> sister at home who loves me. My yeah. partner who loves me. They know who I am. It doesn't matter what other people think. Right. I met you when you were working at a coffee shop. Yes. And our first interaction, um, I think, was a misunderstanding. Um, definitely my fault. I, <laughs> I'm a mumbler, and I'm also terrible at hearing people. I say I'm a good listener, but that's a lie. Um, and so I misheard you when you when you said your name was Ben. That that was your preferred name. Right. I thought you had said that you go by them, and I said 
oh, me too. And you said, wait a minute, what? And I said, okay, hold on, rewind. I did not hear you. I'm wearing a mask. There's a barrier between us. Let's restart that conversation. But it was, it was, it was one of those things where it was a a happy accident, right? I would agree. Because then we started talking about other things when I would come in and get my my fix, as it were. Absolutely. You addict. Yeah. <laughs> you keep me employed. So thank you. You're welcome. You're um, very welcome. No, it definitely was a happy accident. I mean, I went home and I told my partner because that was also at a time where I was still beginning mm-hmm. to use my correct pronouns right. myself. Right. And so with that misunderstanding, you know, I went home and I said, hey, guess what happened today? I actually told someone my pronouns and they were respectful of it. And we continued with the conversation, which seems like a very small win but for someone who doesn't get wins very often that's a very big win and so i appreciate it and now look where we are yeah exactly (laughs) we're we're talking about uh about pride and and what that means in this wonderful month of june oh gosh (laughs) it's so hot oh man (laughs) happy summer people people know people know that we're in arizona and what what does that mean it's boiling oh my god um, I have to take a shower every single day. You know what? I the, the thing that I'm I I'm from originally from uh, Chicago. The the thing that was worse there was the humidity. At least I don't have to do. Deal it is with that a dry anymore. heat here. I'm a Tucson yeah. native. I'm used to it, but I'm so over it. I'm so bored. I wish for green, and I wish for something around seventy. Right. That would right. be so nice. Well, you could always go up into to Mount Lemon, isn't it? Cooler. Up I was there? just up there a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um. You're also a liar if you say it's cooler up there. It's well, what? It's you get five degrees little, cooler up little, there? Well, it's not a liar. I mean, it's, it's nice. A, it's 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 not as uh, not as hot. I it's guess. not as hot. <laughs> you can bring a cooler up there if you want. I brought all of my painting supplies. It was a very nice day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You just kind of sat out there and did some um, some scenery stuff or just um, basically go with whatever you're feeling Whatever was in my head that day. Lots of colors. Yeah, that's 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 what's in my head a lot of times when I do my my artwork with uh, oil based pastels on canvas. It's like I express myself with a lot of colors. You know, I did not like using color in a lot of my works until recently. Yeah, and I think that a lot of the pictures I had imagined in my head up until recently were black and white, and mm-hmm. so a lot of my art was in black and white. Um, I don't know where that switch came from, but now I'm am almost doing everything in color, which yeah. is new for me and also very exciting i i like the use of color right now um but i also still love black and white so like um i'm imagining myself covered in tattoos and of course i imagine myself covered in black and white so right right. back in my back in my day back in your prime (laughs) back in my prime i I don't know if that was really my prime but um yeah that was the same thing with me it's like a um just black pens on white paper Mm -hmm. just draw a lot of tribal stuff I used to draw too. It was just kind of like a fun, fun expression for me to just kind of explore that. And then when I started doing the oil-based pastels on canvas, that's when I started employing, you know, uh, exploring color and space and and things like that and orientation and really, really fun stuff. I probably, you know, I, I probably should have gone to art school, but eh, I don't know. That's exactly what I'm saying too. But everyone says you're you're young enough; you can still go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know I am. Yeah. There's 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 nothing. Yeah. You can go at any age. I do take a lot of pride in saying I am self taught. Right. Which is kind of cool. Me too. (laughs) Me too. I mean, it's that's like you know when when I come up with these things. uh, I mean, that's probably why I'm showing everyone. (laughs) I (laughs) am really protective about my art. It's not until recently that I've been sharing it with people. I mean, like my art is in my workplace, and that's something new for me too that I'm sharing it with the public. Um, But it's been received pretty well. Some old men have said that it's weird and i said have a great day (laughs) i don't care it's cool that's just like your opinion i know i'm like yeah it is weird art what do you think of it what else do you think of it it's Um, it's it's weird i'm like okay you do know that it's art it's supposed to be weird it's kind of like the thing yeah that's kind of what it is yeah that's that's um my my uncle is an artist but he is one of these artists that's um mostly (sighs) He likes to do it for the craft. It's more for about the the process. So so he will take a picture out of National Geographic or whatever and just duplicate it and do it in such a way it's to make it like perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, like not not always picture perfect, but he he experiments with styles and things and tries to replicate things 
but to the best of his ability. Right. But it's more about the technical for him. It's not about the expression. Mm-hmm. It's it's you look at the stuff and you go, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? What is it? What were you thinking? And it's like, oh, I was thinking about the process of, you know, how putting these... paint on a canvas. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, or how this thing was how you layer this thing or how, you know, but it, it's about the process of doing the thing, which I think is just as valid. Um, as nowadays. creating just for the sake of creating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that I work with a mix of both. I definitely have been either or. I mean, I've created for the sake of a reward, um, financial or someone just saying great job. Right. And sometimes it doesn't feel as genuine as creating just for the sake of creating. But I totally get where you're coming from. There's a lot of different factors that yeah. play into what you're creating and how you're creating it and why the product is what it is. And I'm more understanding about that now. Used to he used to call my stuff modern art or something like that, and I was just like, "What? What does that mean?" Uh, <laughs> you know, like Jackson Pollock was what I thought of when I thought of modern. Um, it's like you know, like throwing yes, paint, throwing on, paint a canvas. on a canvas. Yeah, it's and it's like that's that's the first thought that popped into my head, and I was like, "No." I think modern no. is a very empty word. Well, yeah. What does that mean? Exactly. Even, right? I think it's cast over such a wide range of things that it almost loses validity. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Right. I mean, it's to me, art is about expressing yourself, period, end of sentence. I mean, you know, good or bad, doesn't matter. It's it's just kind of like either, I think at either its core, connects, with you, connects with you on a level or it doesn't. I think at its core, that's what art should be. Yeah. I think it's cool that people can make a career out of it and yeah. it can be done with other intentions in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that everyone, regardless of artistic ability, should create anything Definitely. just for the sake of Definitely. creating. Yeah. Because it's, it's an ability that everyone possesses. Right, right. You just got to figure that's, out how to do it. That's the thing. What people tell me all the time, I don't know about you, but they go, oh, I could never do that. Oh, I'm not like, a creative person. I can't draw. Yeah, Stick exactly. Figure. It's like, um, okay, you but just, you can do something else. You just start. That's all you got to do. It's it, That's the, the beautiful thing about art is there's no wrong answer. You just do it, and mm-hmm. either you like it or you don't, or you just identify with what you're putting on. You know, it's just like feel what you're doing, and that's all you got to do. And be content with whatever it was. Well, it's, and it's the thing, too. When you put it down there, it's like it's a learning experience, too. It's like you didn't like the way that was oriented. Okay, next try, time don't do it try that it differently. way. Yeah. Try, try, try it a different way. And it's just, you know, it's a learning experience like anything else, and you got to just kind of work at it. And I yeah. think that, I mean... I like talking about art, but I want to tie that into, you know, gender identity. I think Mm -hmm. it is a learning experience, too. It's how can I express myself today? And did that work in, you know, not triggering a fight or flight? Did that work in helping my mood be better today? And then if it didn't, what can I change for tomorrow to help me feel more comfortable within my own skin? See, that's a very that's a very um, positive way to think about it. You're thinking about it daily, and you're thinking about how it impacts your world. It's something, without sounding dramatic, it's something that I cannot stop thinking about every single day. It is something that affects every single aspect of my life. It is me. And it's, I mean, I've been told that I talk about it too much, and it's done for attention, but I can't express that it's simply who I am. It's not me talking about myself too much. It's me talking about what's relevant in my life. It's... You know, I I can't help it. It's what is happening at the current moment. Yeah, and if you don't if if you don't want to hear about it, well then you can go right over there if you want. The door's uh-huh. right over it's there. Right over there. Don't let it hit your ass on the way out. It's like <laughs> they used to say. Um, yeah, that was the same thing for me when I was doing things like experimenting with um my piercings and stuff. Oh, I it's love like piercings. People, I I. You know, I don't know if you know this or if I'd show you the picture of, of me back when I was in my 20s, but I had, like, I don't know, 19 piercings. I love that. 19 yeah, pretty... is my lucky number. Oh, yeah? I love the number 19. Yeah. I have 11 piercings. Okay. Um, I like 11. That's my favorite number. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, that's my favorite. Maybe this is um, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. And it's, it's a like... cool way of expressing yourself. That's another thing, too. Like, I think that when people think of, like, ear jewelry or even facial jewelry a lot of the time it's women who are rocking that kind of stuff right. but i think it's super cool to find that on a man or someone who identifies other than feminine yeah. and that's where i like to mix it up too i love my jewelry but i also like wearing men's clothes you know 
And that was a thing, too, also in my time when it was kind of like, oh, when you wear the earring over here, it means this. It means like, something. It doesn't mean anything. It's just you're you're putting jewelry on. It's, I think it did you know, mean something at one point. It definitely did. I think it was a part of gay culture uh-huh. to signify that, you know, it was an unspoken language because it was really... Oh was, yeah, you're right because it was it was kind think, of taboo, right? It was just well, it was of, really dangerous to talk about that stuff in the yeah. open. So people signified that they were in certain groups by, you know, where I think it was like a hoop in a certain ear that gay men would wear. I think it was like the left ear or something. Don't right. quote me on that. <laughs> I definitely think it doesn't mean as much now. I think people should decorate their bodies however they oh, yeah. seem fit. Yeah. But I think it's cool to also take into consideration that at one point it did have it start it had a it had a meaning. It had an origin. Yes. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Okay. Do you want to start uh do you want to start talking about video games? Because sure. I know how much you love video games. I do. I do love video games. I don't play them often though, so forgive me for my lack of knowledge. Oh, no, no, no. No, that's that's I mean that's the thing that I wanted to talk to you about was the story you told me about how the Sims kind oh, of was. Yeah, was I loved kind of The a... Sims. That was my game when I was <laughs> when I was a kid and when I was in uh, high school. Mm-hmm. It was it was an escape for me. It was really cool. It was like a virtual Barbie doll game. Mm-hmm. Like I I just kind of brought it from my childhood, right. and so I had this really intense attachment to it because it was this sense of freedom that I had never had before, especially not in childhood. I could create any type of character that looked any type of way, and it was me. Not in a in a toxic way, but it was me who had all of the control. It was me being able to make decisions about my girl sims kissing girl sims and no one being there to tell me that that was weird or wrong. Right. And that was really cool. And then I had also mentioned to you when you brought up that you wanted to tie in, you know, gender identity and video games. Uh, EA and The Sims had a while back released um, like a new patch to the game where you could make uh sims that were no longer on the binary spectrum right which i was super i wasn't i was really underwhelmed to be honest with you at the time it came out because i didn't think it was relevant enough to me right but now especially now that i don't play the game as often Mm -hmm. i appreciate that so much and honestly it makes me want to go back and turn my computer on and wait for it to load for an hour and play it because i didn't have that when i was actively playing the game and it's such a cool experience to now know that my girl can my girl sims can kiss any gender of sims like right, that's so right. that's so again a small win but it's so cool to me and there's also things with you can uh, also like pregnancy and things yeah, like that yeah male can, sims can get pregnant i mean you right. can have alien babies why couldn't i have a male sim get pregnant right, right. that's the, like you can unlock plant sims i could have a plant human but i couldn't have a human that doesn't identify with either right. sex that's kind of insane up until the point when which we had it which right. was right somewhat recently right yeah i, I want to say within the last year right. or so right and they then ea really did uh work on making sure that that was you know done right i think for know, what as, they as, could as, do what, within right. the game they did a fantastic job um that's the thing also with with uh, gender identity and characters that I wanted to talk about too. There's, there's the character creation thing where, you know, people want to create a character that represents them or they want to create a character that represents a a fantasy, a fantasy of theirs or, or something that they wanted, you know, that they think, you know, like they want to play or role play as something, something that's almost only obtainable within the game. Right. Yeah. Right. That's not like something in real life that you'd be, Mm -hmm. but there are a lot of companies or a lot of people that I, I, I get this feeling that they do it as an afterthought. It's like, let's throw this in there because we want to, you know, be and be inclusive. We want to make sure that you know people who play the game feel like they're heard and seen. Um, but it doesn't really always land. You know what I mean? It's not like you know they they don't take things. I don't know. They don't consult with people who live that life, or you they don't, don't think it's done to. Uh, the best of everyone's ability yeah it doesn't seem like it's misrepresented but that being said i mean i i also think they're trying 
Right. There's 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 a there's a trying part to that, but it's like But I, what are you trying to do? It's it's sometimes yeah, that thing is true. that kind of thing is thrown into video games because it's already coded into the game, why not? It's or a, let's put this in because this is going to be an important aspect of the game. Yeah. And I think that's a very those two things are very different. Right. Like with Cyberpunk. Like I don't know if I told you about Cyberpunk, but the thing that they said you can customize the junk of your character. Gotcha. You can, um, there are two different penis sizes. One is uncut. Cool, blah, cool. Blah, blah. Getting into the real important stuff. Right. Important <laughs> things. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like, oh, you can, you know, you can create a male with, with female with, genitalia. I gotcha. Okay. Or, but what they didn't do was, um, a non binary, anything kind of pronoun related. It was the voices you could choose. Male or female. Male or female. One, two, or three. Right, right. And it wasn't, it was kind of done, I don't know. Haphazardly? Yeah, I think that's a good word. I like haphazardly. That's a good word. I love that word. Haphazardly. I get told I have a big vocabulary often. Yeah. (laughs) Do you you ever say that people say you're garrulous? Uh, No, what's that word? Loquacious, verbose. Okay, all right. Wait a minute. Yeah, garrulous. Anyway, so... um, but that's that's not that's not a bad thing. I, I think it's totally cool. I'm garrulous. Anyway, way over uh, the head. Okay, <laughs> not that big of a vocabulary. We can we can, we can look it up later. That's okay, fine. sounds good. That's the great thing about the internet age is we can look stuff up now. Back in my day, we used to have to go to the library. <laughs> uh, so anyway, who's Dewey Decimal? Do we? Oh, <laughs> okay. That was a joke. I got that. Um, I'm funny. Just kidding. Yep. <laughs> I'm just and, 20. I'm a child. Well, that's that's okay. That's I think okay. it's funny, though. And for being as young as I am, I'll be honest with you, I don't like the internet. I'm not attached to the internet like a lot of my peers are. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm the creative type that's mostly stuck in my head doing stupid things up here. You know, a lot of artsy stuff. Um, so I'm not big on the internet. But I do like video games. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing, too. There, there's, a, there's a positive and negative. Like, anything developed like that where i you know i've seen it grow right i've seen it saying it grow from when i was using it in college mm-hmm. and it was just like you've been here since bullet, the start bulletin board systems and things where it's just like you know aol <laughs> you don't even know what aol is but it's dial know, up yeah dial up and stuff like that like i've got a, a system over there this it's a sega dreamcast and it used dial up to connect that was one of the first systems that had internet connection where you could play with people on a console that's it was awesome. amazing that's a dinosaur right there but it's a dinosaur <laughs> that's a fossil totally. yeah belongs in it's, a museum yep, it does it does actually and i still play it occasionally that's anyways, cool um gotta remember your history video game or otherwise so one of the things that um media and and this is kind of plays into the whole, you know, like technology and the way things can, people can complain about things today that's different than, you know, word of mouth, right? Um, they complained about that character creator and saw that, got all angry about that specifically, mm-hmm. and completely lost sight of a transgender storyline of a character that was basically painted in a very positive sort of light within cyberpunk within cyberpunk okay and and that that's 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 kind of the sad thing when when you when you rush to judgment like that and and a lot you of these people overlook things you, you overlook things and and there was like like i said and then you know people calling them on it and stuff but that's not even going to that's not going to fix the 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 issue is you know if you don't accept things and and you can you you can play through the game and then come back to it and say these are the things you need to change and not completely discount something completely disregard the game because you didn't like it because you didn't like one one, once right right exactly and and that's what i hate about reviews when you review something and you've only played, especially with these games that are getting so long, like, you know, you've They're got They're getting very of... complicated, which I I think is really cool. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, 
those slower paced games, they're not for everyone, right. but they're for some people and they are really complicated. They're really fascinating. Yeah. It takes a lot of time and energy to do that. Yeah. With with Cyberpunk, I actually played through the whole thing and unlocked all the different achievements and whatnot. I probably put about 200 hours into that thing. It takes a lot of work. It's it's a challenge. It's yeah. a cool strategy that um, a lot of people like the, the time it takes that you need to put yeah. into that. Well, for, for me, it's about the stories. If the stories are there, I will play a game. Mm-hmm. If it's just an open world for the sake of being an open world. You kind of get bored. I, yeah. It's, it's like, well, what's the point? I want to be told. I want to, you know i understand people who like that that they just like doing their own thing in their open world which is kind of like you know like uh, minecraft or anything like yeah, that. yeah and the sims things. too could definitely right. be put under that category yeah exactly and and, and my friend chris is, is my normal co-host he he doesn't quite understand i'm trying to i'm trying to come up with a way to to explain to him what the appeal is yeah uh, why it's enjoyable to people to to play in a sandbox like that and i um, you know i think at its core video games are an escape for people they should be enjoyable and if roaming around in a virtual city interacting with absolutely nothing but ones and zeros floats your boat then why <laughs> then not do it, man. yeah i yeah. enjoyed that i think it there wasn't necessarily like an objective to my game but it was experiencing all was, the weird things i could do in well, the see, world that, but which that's is the fun thing. in that itself was, yeah that's the objective right yeah. it's like exploring the, the different things they like made an what, open world for you to explore the like, open world right like what what happens when i do this or yeah. what happens when this thing happens and then you've got you know it's you've got choice and and you can interact with people you can have the you the was it woohoo? The woohoo. <laughs> yeah. My sister and I moved in this past year, and I think it's funny if we needed a code word, we would use woohoo. woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, it's just discreet, you know. Yeah. Respectful. Yeah. Did you say it? How do you say it? You say we just like, text each other woohoo, and it's funny because our phone text it's almost like woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> so it actually mimics the sound of yeah. the woohoo. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to say before I forgot the idea in my head, um, why free like open worlds are enjoyable. My siblings and I, when we were kids, we had this like motocross game uh-huh. where you could play objectively, like you could race and you could earn medals, move up, build your career as like this big motocross star, or you could play in like their open world like training area, or whatever, to get a like a feel of the controls of the game. Right. That's all we would do. And then half the time we would drive to the end of the world and it would just like blow you up and it would right. just send you back and it would restart the open world and you would just continue to drive. It, I don't know how why it was so entertaining, right? but it was. It was just for the entertainment. I could do whatever I wanted to do. My yeah. character will respond and I can do it again. Yeah, that, and that's that's the thing with games in general, I think, that people lose sight of. They, 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 they get so lost in their anger and their expectations that they lose sight of the fact that it's supposed to be fun. It's a video game. It's, it's, supposed, it's a game. It yeah. has game in the, in the title, and it's supposed to be something you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you're being angry about something, is that enjoyable? To some people it is. I don't enjoy it. I don't he- enjoy hearing about it. Um, but, you know... I, it, the game is supposed to be enjoyable so but yeah we all enjoy different things about about that like the you know the open world thing there there have been games where i've explored every single nook and cranny or mm-hmm. something but generally my preference is tell me a good story tell yeah, me a good story you need a quest yeah well I, not even a quest it's like I, it can be a meandering sort of thing but you just want to know what happens next. I want to know. I like yeah. that. You're here, you're there for the story. Yeah. I'm also into video games with a story. Yeah. Or if I could create my own story, that's cool. Right. And that, that kind of, uh, I showed you this uh, video. This is kind of like, uh, I guess we can talk about the game before I move on to several um, gender nonconforming uh, characters in games. I guess, you know, um, not really gender, well, you know, various characters that yes. have pride i guess that uh, we're all very prideful right yeah um but anyway i showed you the trailer to this uh game called tell me why Mm -hmm. which uh by don't not entertainment it just came out this year uh for the xbox um or xbox game studios for windows and xbox one and it is a story about twins allison and tyler they reunite after their mom dies. They reunite after 10 years of being basically estranged. And they're twins, so they have this special connection uh, between them. And it's 
it's the first game to feature a story um, about a trans male character protagonist yeah in fact yeah which is yeah which is which is kind of it's about damn time it's bittersweet yeah it's one of those things like why hasn't it happened there have been supporting characters in those roles you know before like i mentioned with cyberpunk there's a character in there that's a that that's a uh, um, a trans woman <clears throat> that you meet but it's kind of like it's not one thing about that too is it doesn't beat you over the head with it. It's just basically it's just kind of like yeah, that's it's normal. who that character is. Yeah. They exist in this world, There's and they're nothing totally wrong cool with it. That. And it's nothing wrong that's with it. Super cool. And I that's... like how that's embedded in almost like video game culture. Like this is something that we can do. This is something that we're doing now. Why not do it more often? Right. Because right. it's okay. Yeah. Because it's okay. Because art mimics, you know, imitates life. Video games, you know, if people like that exist in real life, of course you're not going to have trolls and goblins, but like. You know, people who are not... I met some guys who... You've met some trolls. Trolls and goblins. (laughs) But, like, if people want to live their fantasy, and if their fantasy is just as simple as, I hope so no one calls me miss or ma'am today, like, that should be available to people. Right. It's it's small wins. Yeah. I'll go back to that. It's small wins. And if we have, you know, the technology, and if we're already doing it, we should be doing it for the right reasons. Right. Right. I just and that's the thing too with 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 my back to my enjoyment of the story, right? I want to hear stories. I want to hear stories about people's experiences. I want to hear stories about um their trials and tribulations, rough times, good times, bad times. I that's if the story is engaging and, and I want some diversity in that. And it's sad yeah, it's, that we don't have, you know, it's it's mostly a lot of white male stories and and even today female characters also it's it's not there's there's a representation of positive women character woman characters very very low as well um and so that's that's slowly changing too um but you know we got a long way to go and 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 I, but i think we're a step in the right direction the first trans male character is it, it's exciting fabulous yeah and if I had an Xbox or a PC, I would probably play that game. Be the but first you know to what? purchase. Yeah, but you know, I'm a I'm a PlayStation guy. Sorry. Did you? What did you think of that video? Did you? Did you of uh, the the trailer? Did first of all, I will say the art style was killer. It was yeah. so cool. Yeah. It was. Um. It reminded me a lot of The Sims. It was very detailed, but it was almost. It was almost murky enough that you know you're in a cartoon. You're you're right. living in a video game. It was so cool. Yeah. And I think that it didn't hit you over the head that this is a trans character. It definitely right. made it known, but it didn't become annoying. It didn't become something that was intolerable. Because I think a lot of people, when they hear, oh, it has a transgender character, this whole game is going to be gay. Right. This whole game is going to be for no one but homos. I right. think it's cool that this is a trans character, but the char- the the game is about you know the connection the connection the, between, between the, twins. the twins. It's not about yeah. this character being trans, right? It's it's just an additive, um, but it's it's purposeful, right? It's meaningful, right? Exactly, and that's that's the thing too. Also, Don't Nod um, Entertainment did uh, they have an FAQ? I didn't show you the FAQ page, but it's a long FAQ page. It's very very conscious of how events in the game can be triggering, almost to a fault, almost to a point where it's like you know. I don't think you need to ask all these questions, but it's very cool that you are. That you went to the extent. Yeah. The full extent. Right. Exactly. Because there, there are um, other characters you meet that are, um, there's a, a trans woman, I think, of a of um, in, um, some sort of um, indigenous people's descent that you come across and and in that game and interact with. And they, they basically tell you about, you know, it's it's an FAQ that, pretty impressive FAQ. As far as just looking at and going, wow, these guys are really aware. thorough. Yeah, they they wanted to do and, it right, and it's and yeah, exactly. And it's not like a cover your ass kind of a thing. It's it's more because they are they care about. Yeah, it was first priority. Represent. It yeah. was let's get this done. Let's do it well. Right. Let's which do it is, right. I think it's admirable. Yeah. More people should be doing it that way. Exactly. Exactly. I am going to bring up a whole bunch of transgender characters and uh, gender nonconforming characters that you've never heard of. So let's just 
let's just go go there. I don't even know if I should do this because um almost all of it will go over my head. I think so. I mean there's there are some really positive ones. There's um have you ever heard of Dragon Age Inquisition? No, okay. that's going to be a no. <laughs> okay. It's it's um it's a game by a company called BioWare. You've probably heard of Mass Effect, mm -hmm. which is the space. Yeah. I have. This is kind of a... Yeah, BioWare high... sounded familiar. Yeah. Th this is a high fantasy kind of same company that makes Mass Effect. They're all, they're notorious for very much like um, um, their relationships in games, their dialogues, their dialogue choices impacting things going down the road. Storylines, gotcha. Yeah. And there is a character in this, in um, Dragon Age Inquisition named Krem. And Krem was born female, but she used to pretend to shave. I mean, she's got a really, it's a really cool backstory for, for a trans character. She used to pretend to shave with her father mm -hmm. growing up. And then um, I believe he was an only child and he basically went into the army uh, because he wanted to support his family, who was very poor. But that's he. He also he paid off basically a um, a medical examiner to look to basically assign his gender as male, and just that's that's what he is. So yeah. he's in the male army, and it's just really interesting. And he's he ends up being kind of a kind of a mercenary because they find out that. His gender is not his male, son, right? Yeah, and so he's kind of an enemy. But uh, then you know, still he, maybe he, the hero of the story. Basically, well, I mean, hero is kind of it's is subjective, right? Yeah, maybe not the re the best word to right. use. But he's 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 a character that you interact with that's that's got an interesting and kind of you know, it's a story. It's exposure to a story. That not uh, a lot of people are ever exposed right, to, right? Which exactly. is nice, yeah. just to even have that. One character that I want to are you familiar with the game Apex Legends? Yes, I am. I know of it. I've never played it. Okay. I've seen it been played. Yeah, there's um, there's a a non-binary character in that game called Bloodhound, and cool name. There's yeah, Bloodhound, but there is a little bit of of controversy. You know the the people that voice these characters, they want it to match, right? They want a non-binary person to to voice a non-binary character, which so is nice, so which is good, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm, I think that's good not only for uh, for across all genders, ethnicities, whatever. It's it, it just makes sense. It does. It's almost as if like. Not almost as if, but it brings my mind to the argument, like in movies, why aren't we hiring? gay actors and actresses to play gay roles why aren't we hiring disabled people to play disabled roles like why right. are we right. using perfectly abled people or people who would have to then act to fit that that role why are we not hiring people who have a genuine experience with it and i think part of that it was part of the craft it was part of exploring how to represent these people in an accurate way if you're an actor that's that. the respect that's respecting the art form of acting right. that's but but i mean now is a different time than i like then. that now we have people who are able to fill those roles based off of genuine experience yeah. and they're they're not discriminated against anymore yeah. they're actually we're trying to invite them into these spaces right i think there's a balance there that needs to be struck as far as um you know an actor can play that role and explore that role, and that's good. But at the same time, can this be done by someone who is of that of of that denomination, ethnicity, descent? Yeah, descent. Kind of. And I, I don't think we should automatically say, "Oh, that's horrible." That this per within within reason. I mean, there are some obvious examples of racist roles historically that are just kind of like oh no 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 why'd you do that yeah that's that's just wrong that's a full looking body back cringe. on it right now looking back on it i mean you know me younger i didn't really put a lot of stock in those things i didn't think about those things when i was a kid right i didn't realize a lot of those things when i was a kid that that was wrong you can look at them now and go oh Ooh. man <laughs> 
Ouch. Um, I think that's cool too because I it, I grew up with it all around me. I think I was pretty aware of those things right. from a young age. Yeah. Um. So it's cool just to kind of compare our experiences with it. And you know, as long as you're an understanding person and can understand, it's a different time. That's that's the thing. It's Absolutely. Like, you know, yeah. Different perspective. Different time. Right. But there's a line. <laughs> there is a line at which it's kind of like okay, but you're not living in that time anymore. It's it's now this time, and you've got to you know kind of adjust. Yeah, I think you have to have patience for everyone to catch up to I you. I agree totally. Um, but it is also you need the willingness of people right. to want to catch up to you. It's right. times are moving quickly. Things change. That's mm-hmm. a fact of life that we can't control so why not embrace it and just kind of help everyone move move forward i totally agree with that i want to bring up something that that i heard someone say to me that it kind of rubbed me the wrong way and it was opposite of what you were saying which was basically it's not it's not my place to educate you on on these things it's not my place if you want to learn those things you can look at the internet and look them up and look at history. I've definitely not- one, I've definitely been one to say that okay. to people. Okay. I think too because I am an, of a younger generation, I kind of expect people to have this knowledge, right. which I I think is a kind of entitlement that I have, which I do need to be aware of. And like anything else, like I think the success in life is balance, and you treat every situation differently. If you if you detect that someone is willing to learn, you're more likely to teach them the things that you know that that, that you that, want to that, teach that, them. That, that, yeah. yeah, that means something to you that are mm-hmm. that you think can enrich their life and and I don't want to say change their mind, but, but it's, introduce them to something they've probably never heard of. Correct. Me coming out both or, times, or don't understand. Right. Yeah, something that's a completely new concept to them. I think me coming out both times to my family was an educating moment for everyone because I am the first of my family. So not only did I have to teach myself, but I had to teach everyone around me. Right. And it's something I do every day. Right. It's really interesting um, with, you know, the acceptance of family or family that's there for you i think we talked we talked briefly personally about, yeah that's a whole puddle of quicksand <laughs> right right we talked about something my, my my father didn't understand my anxiety and my panic attacks i've also had that with um my parents right then one day he saw me hit rock bottom i had gone off my meds and i had been in a really bad place my best friend took me to the hospital and she had been, you know, there for me and understood what I was going through. So she knew what was happening, but my father had never seen me in that state. So he had never, he didn't know how bad it got. He He didn't know what you were talking about until he saw it for himself. Right. Exactly. Which is truthfully what it takes for a lot of people to learn. Uh, For better, for worse. It's just what it is. And that's when he developed he he still said to me he said i can't i can't relate it's never happened to me so i can't identify with your situation but i can understand now what you're going through more and i can be there for you and i you know he, he was he definitely changed and understood more and was more supportive once he saw me in a state where you know it was it was like rock bottom and that's something that's like it's very difficult to get that kind of education to people when it, sometimes it takes an extreme like that. Baptism to, by fire, right? Almost. Exactly. It's, it's and there's not really w- there's not really a way to do that with 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 gender identity. There's not, and it's a hard thing for me to explain to people who have always been confident in just their role in society yeah. and how they believe they're supposed to act right. in their life. Right. Um, so it's hard. It's it's something I've experienced my whole life, but it's something I haven't been able to explain or put words to until just recently. So Right. And then your artwork probably helps, too. Um, It's beginning to. I think I need to continue to allow myself the freedom to help me, uh, help me express myself through my art. Yeah. It takes a while. It, it takes does. a while. It's a learning process, too. I learn to do new things artistically as I learn to 
express myself right you know as i grow as a person yeah and it's going to continue borderlands 3 i love borderlands i love the art style of borderlands okay um totally intrigued me yeah uh i bought the wrong copy of it Uh, (laughs) i bought it for xbox one i don't have an xbox one fun fact (laughs) okay um but i like borderlands big so anyone out there who wants to buy (laughs) a borderlands one no no, no, borderlands two copy for xbox one what i'm what i'm saying is anyone who wants to buy kenny an xbox one or that too can just kind of send one to me and then i will send it to kenny and then i like that idea better let's go with that (laughs) <laughs> there you solved. go. Now I can play Borderlands. Exactly. I just needed a new console. Is it Borderlands 3, right? I think it was Borderlands 1 or 3. Okay. I have this... a terrible memory, so okay. 1 We're... or 3. There's kind of a polarizing argument about cell shading, and people say that, you know, it's like, oh, it's like a comic book or whatever. And it's like, I kind of, I, it depends on how... <sighs> It's like anything else artistic, right? It's, yeah. It, does, it, does it fit into the world? Does it... It seems to add kind of that kind of crazy, zany... It does. It almost has a level of chaos where yeah. it throws you into the game. It's it's supposed to be a fantasy world that you've never seen before, and it adds an even bigger effect when it looks like something you've never seen before. Right, right. That's what I like about it. That's and also cool. a lot of the presentation is very comic booky too. Yeah, it introduces a lot of the characters. I mean, it's a, you're interacting in a 3D world with a 2D background. It's really cool. Yeah. And then also, uh, just to mention, um, there are, I, I think, two non-binary characters. But there is rep- representation in Borderlands 3 where... I like that, too, because each of the characters have their own um, goods, pros and cons. Right. Um, and so I like that they add that into their story. Right. And it also works itself into like the powers and the abilities that they have. It, right. It's not just something that they threw in there it's something that adds depth to a character right there's there's flack i think it is the uh, the new animal i don't know i i you know what i haven't played borderlands 3 i have I'm to sorry. go back and play you make me want to play it now so <laughs> I, I played the first two and i enjoyed the first two immensely but three is like it looks like more of the same so i'm looking for something different different, different games but I can understand the appeal, and I think it's very cool that they're adding these. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. Do you have anything to add about inclusion or anything? Uh, well, thank you for including me on the podcast. You're, you're very welcome. I thought that was a nice bridge. Yeah, no, that's good. Good, <laughs> um, good no, transition. No, thank you for the conversation. I think it was nice. I, I like I like this. I haven't been able to explain these kinds of concepts, explore this kind of conversation with someone uh, in a while so thank you yeah you're very welcome i appreciate it my name is ben and i'm kenny and we have uh, enjoyed our discussion here today and thank you for joining us we'll see you next or i'll see you next week take care bye bye